to this video all about this fantastic beige machine I have in front of me. This is the Dell Optiplex GS Plus. I got this a little while ago as part of a job lot of stuff. I think it was primarily an IBM CRT I went along to get, but ended up with a few other bits and pieces as well. And this was one of them. I think I took a quick look at it about a year ago when I got it. Never looked at it again, so I think it's time to have a closer look today. A quick whiz round the case. We've got a red badge that tells us we've got our Pentium inside. I think I've seen a red badge before. I've seen a few blue ones, so it's quite nice. And then we've got the Dell logo there, which tells us we've got a GS Plus. Over to the other side of the front, we've got a power button. We've got a reset button. And the floppy drive's kind of nicely embedded in this funky curved front edge it's almost like a cresting wave kind of shape and then we've got a cd-rom drive as well from the side you can see that kind of cresting wave profile on the front quite funky for the time and um, it reminds me of those american 50s cars studebakers i think they were called you can see what i mean looking at this very sort of nose heavy kind of rolling over the top kind of wave thing going on Moving on to the back, we've got our power supply little sticker to show when it was last electronically checked. So it looks like it was last checked for electronic safety in December 2001. So I guess the last time this was actually in a business or whatever was all the way back then. On the back, hey. Looks like there's a sound card in there. You wouldn't have expected that because these machines were primarily used in business and educational settings. Oh, this one, who knows what's happened since it was released from its office work in 2001. But yeah, there's a sound card in here, so it'll be interesting to see what that is. Uh, one of the blanks for the expansion slots is engraved with Dell. I don't think I've seen that before. Branded expansion slot cover. It's quite funky. There is some rust on the IO shield and the connectors. We'll have to get to that in a minute. But in the meantime, let's crack this baby open and see what's inside. Super simple to get into these things. There's just a couple of buttons at the back. You push them in and you flip the lid forward and bang, you're inside. If only all PCs were that simple. Everything looks kind of toolless. You just have to push a couple of little like lever type things on the side of the floppy drive and the whole thing just pops out on its bracket. So simple. And once the floppy drive is out of the way, same thing for the optical drive, just pops right out of there, disconnect the cables and out it comes. Getting your expansion cards out is pretty cool on this thing. So they also sit in a block and there's a little lever on the side of the case and you lift it and the whole thing just pops out. So it's a riser card that's in a slot on the motherboard. It's all proprietary Dell stuff. But then the whole thing pops out and the top of the case is open as well. So if these things were still plugged into monitors and speakers, you'd still be able to lift it out, which is rather cool, I think. So taking a look in here, we've just got one card, a sound card. So we'll take a look at that in just a second. So I see Creative, it's a sound blaster. You can never have too many ISA sound blasters, so this one's clearly a plug and play. I'm not seeing any jumpers on there. So we've got a CT2940, which is quite an interesting card because it was kind of on the cusp of where Creative Labs stopped using real OPL and started to roll the MIDI into their own chips as a cost-cutting exercise, also providing inferior MIDI sound at the same time. That's what this has. I think it was called CQM, the creative version. But the the space for the OPL chip is on this card and it would have gone here if it had one. Unfortunately, it doesn't. But still, it's another Sound Blaster 16 and you can never have too many of those. Back to taking the machine apart. And yeah, one screw and the hard drive comes out too. So very easy machine to work on. So it's a Western Digital Caviar 21200. 
think it's a 1.2 gigabyte drive. I always yearned for a Western Digital Caviar back in the day, uh, just because they sound classy caviar. I don't think they've got such a good rep now for the failure rate. I'm not too sure, but nice to have and it still works, so cool. Just get the rest of the cables out of the way. And the front panel connector on this thing is also socketed, only goes on one way. So it's a really well thought out machine given given its age. And that age seems to be 27 because this magazine advert has the machine and it came out in 1996. So yeah, it looks very similarly spec to the one I've got. Uh, it says it has a 2 gig hard drive where I only have a 1.2, but 32 megs of RAM, 256 kilobytes of pipeline burst cache, uh, S3 Trio 64V plus with 1 meg of RAM, which is what we've got in the machine. We'll see that in a second. It came with Windows NT installed. And wow, the cost $2,413. The power supplies from Dell and it's 145 watts and there's also two connectors on the motherboard and I've seen this on a couple of machines. So we've got our usual ATX and then we've got another one which is like an old AT style connector. Now I think that this was to provide a bit of extra voltage to the PCI bus given that it was still relatively early days for PCI and that just added a bit of system stability. I'm not too sure about that. If you know any better, please let me know. We've got 72 pin memory modules. There's four of them, though they're not matching. So I can see 16 megabytes written on some of these sticks and four would suggest the 32 megabytes that we saw in the spec on that advertisement. So we'll find out when we boot it up. The motherboard was another one screw thing. So even the motherboard's easy to get out. Well, at least I thought it was. <laughs> I got the screw out and then came across these things and I wasn't quite sure what they were, but they're actually earth points. So they're like clips that the motherboard slides onto and that grounds the motherboard, except I couldn't figure out how to get it off these things to start with. But eventually when my sort of brainlessness subsided, it just slides forward. So it's actually super simple to get out. On the motherboard, we've got the famous 430FX chipset from Intel. I think it was, or was it also called Triton, I think. And you can see the, the S3 Trio video chip and it's one megabyte of RAM directly above it. There's also a couple of sockets, so I guess you could add a second megabyte. Take the CPU off. There's a lot of thermal paste on here. I guess it's the original stuff. It's possible that the guy sold me it went in put some new stuff on but we'll clean it up and put some fresh on anyway and there it is nice shiny pentium 166 mmx made in malaysia in 1995. the machine as a whole is pretty clean but as i mentioned earlier there's a bit of rust on the io panel so i think we need to address that Need to get the I.O. panel off. All the little posts are rusted to hell. The connectors are rusted to hell. I need to clean that up, get some files, get some sandpaper and get to work. So the little standoffs are all rusted to hell. Luckily, I mean, they, they would be fiddly to try and clean up, but I have replacements for those. I think I've got enough, hopefully. So they can just be discarded. And then I'll get the I.O. panel off and I'm just going to get a a bunch of needle files and go around the connectors for the VGA and serial ports etc and clean them up get rid of the surface rust and then I'm just going to use rust converter to paint that on it converts the rust creates a doesn't look pretty <laughs> everything goes blacky bluey color but that should stop it coming back and it should do for now but I think ultimately there's a project here to replace these all together and I might try and do that at some point So that was all done and you can see how it's kind of gone bluey blacky on the bits that I had rust on before but at least there's no rust there anymore which is the main thing so just get some new standoffs put the io panel back on and we should be good to go okay. 
and then it's just a case of putting it all back together again and it went back together as easily as it came apart so super easy machine to work on i wish all pcs of this era were made like this to be quite honest components are all in and that super cool lid just flips on and clicks on that's just love it love, absolutely love it <laughs> since i'm not i'm not bleeding from cutting my hands on the edges of sharp cases or anything which is fabulous so now that it's back together give it a boot now i had booted this thing when i first got it so i do know that it works but i didn't really pay much attention to it so we'll take a closer look once we get going and it has to be said it's a smart looking thing and there may be people looking at that CRT to the left and going, you should be using that. But no, I'm going to play with my new favourite thing, which is the monitor that I made a video of last time. And I'm just going to be using this for a while just to see how it performs with different operating systems, DOS games, different resolutions, all that kind of thing. So yeah, let's see what it does. Okay, so the first thing I noticed, I was expecting to see 32 megabytes of RAM and I can only see 16, so something's wrong. I know that two sticks in the machine are marked as 8 megabyte sticks, so I know I should have at least 16 megabytes, not only 16 megabytes. So we'll have to check that out in a minute. Quickly opening up the machine again. Yeah, this, this is all the RAM that actually came with the machine, but two of these are FPM and two are EDO. So the machine doesn't seem to like a mix. I dug around in my memory and I got two 16 meg sticks. So there should be two 16 megs, two eights, and that should give 48 megabytes of RAM. So we're back into the machine and yeah, we've got are 48 megabytes now showing so it's a bit strange because that is the ram that came with the machine and it clearly didn't like mixing edo and fast page memory i do think that some machines allow that correct me if i'm wrong but yeah this one isn't one of them it seems so all edo now 48 megs This is a business machine, stroke educational machine, and I'm not doing anything educational and I'm not doing anything business-wise on it. I'm going to play some games on it. So we need something a bit better than that one megabyte S3 Trio. So we're going to stick this in. This is a Guillemot Maxi Gamer Voodoo card, four megabyte. Stick that in and that should give us a bit of a boost. And then we'll take a look at some games. So... Swapping cards on this machine is super easy. You just pop the lid off, pop the drive bay box thing out, stick your card in, and the only thing you need a screwdriver for is to secure the card. So I don't think you even need that, to be honest, because it sort of slides into this clampy thing. It's just uh, a dream of a machine to work on, I've got to say that. Dim the lights and get a bit of retro ambiance going. So we're going to try out some games. It has to be a glide game. I have to say, from this sort of period of early glide gaming, I don't actually have many games. I've chosen Battlezone, which is a game that I got back in the day. I don't remember much about this, so I think I got it and probably didn't play it very much. I'm going to play it all the way through now on this machine now that it's out. So we're going to make a start now and take a little look. For those of you who are a bit younger than me, and I imagine I'm speaking to most of the world, <laughs> this is what the original 1980 arcade cabinet for Battlezone looked like. It had a cool periscope type thing that you rested your face in and had two funky joysticks to control the tanks. So I love playing this game and probably the reason why I ran out and bought it as soon as it came out on the PC. Possibly I didn't play it all the way through because it didn't have fabulous vector graphics like this, but for some reason I didn't and it's a good game it supports 
all sorts of early 3D standards, so it supports Glide, and its recommended spec is a Pentium 166, so it seems like a perfect match for this machine. So important that we won the space race. People should know what happened to all those who went missing. The dead should get their honors, and they should have their place in history. Because history has a way of repeating itself. Satellite We've discovered a deposit of biometal along with some strange radar signatures. Build a scavenger and escort it to the biometal deposit. So the premise of the game is simple. On the moon, of all places, there's been a rare biometal discovered. And the biometal allows you to build all sorts of crazy things. Modern tech. Not for the good of humanity, of course, but for killing other people. So you can build crazy weapons and that kind of thing. And of course, the Russians, of all people, who would have thought they would have invaded anywhere, have invaded the moon to try and get this biometal. So the Americans have gone to the moon to get their fair share of the biometal, and needless to say, it all ends up in bloody carnage because they're all fighting each other. The moon setting is really good. You've got a very sort of anti-grav feeling going on here. You kind of bounce around the place. All of your vehicles are kind of, well, they're not necessarily all hover vehicles. They're kind of mech type things like you're getting mech warrior and it's a kind of weird mix of a first person shooter and a real time strategy game so you've got a little bit of basic base building and resource gathering going on but essentially it's just go out and shoot people and then go back and get some ammo and then go out and shoot some more people and try and obey orders from your high command so the first couple of levels are on the moon dirty Soviets go off to Mars and try and grab all of that biometal so needless to say we have to follow I think you can play both sides in this game I think there's also map editors and all sorts of stuff but I'll take a closer look when the time comes but I'm enjoying it so far and I think I'm going to just continue playing it on this machine they're going to keep this machine out because it's so easy to open and close I think it'd be a great machine just to you know try out different early 3d cards on and do early sort of glide gaming on so yeah it's a definite keeper it's going to stay out i'm not going to put it away in the cupboard I keep saying that but this one is so easy to open and close i think this one's definitely the one that i'm going to use for my um, early glide early 3d gaming and i'm going to probably see if i can upgrade it to a 200 mmx perhaps but that's pretty much it i hope you've enjoyed taking a look at this machine and taking a little look at the potential for some future Mars. gaming and yeah that's pretty much it thank you very much if you've made it this far for watching i hope to see you on the next video thanks very much goodbye this material located into such amazing weapons when we left in some ways we knew more and in some ways we knew less but we sure did further the legacy of mars commander this is the most important mission you will ever face. The fate of our country depends upon your success here. The CCA has beaten us to Mars, and after the fiasco on the moon, our forces are greatly weakened. We need you to secure and fortify our region on the surface so that we can establish a base. The CCA has detected our landing and has dispatched scouts to monitor our movements. They're building a base to the southeast and are beginning to fan out to other strategic locations. We've identified three areas with sufficient geothermal activity for building a base. We need you to take and hold at least one area before the CCA controls the whole planet. We've dropped a fourth nav beacon outside the Soviet base. They look well fortified. I do not recommend launching a direct assault. Good luck, Commander. We're counting on you.
Construction started. Building complete. Badger here. You're the boss. I need power. Moving out. Recycler here. Construction started. Unit factory online. Building complete. Commander, incoming CCA units. You're the boss. Recycler here. Construction started. Base under attack. Building complete. Mars, the Greek god of war and the blood-red planet.